Hello. This article is primarily about the role of histone acetylation in the treatment of cancer. In it, we propose that recent research results properly interpreted have the potential to transform the way an important class of epigenetic drugs are used to treat human cancers. Now, to get across to you why we're so excited about these results, I need to give you some background. So the first thing you need to know is that histones are the primary DNA packaging proteins in humans and all other higher organisms. Second thing is that certain histone amino acids, lysines, are modified by the attachment of acetate groups. And the acetates are put on by a particular family of enzymes, the lysine acetyl transferases, and they're removed by another enzyme family, the histone deacetylases, which we'll abbreviate to HDACs. The third point is that the acetate groups turn over rapidly. It's a very dynamic system and acetates are on and off within just a, just a few minutes. And the final crucial point is that histones and their acetylation are intimately involved in the control of gene expression in human cells. They help determine which genes are switched on in which cells and when. Now given what I've just told you, it will not be surprising that when you treat cells with histone deacetylase inhibitors, we'll call them HDACI, you get massive and dramatic hyperacetylation of histones and other proteins. But the puzzle, the first important puzzle, is how do cells survive? Because the fact is that most hum human cells survive treatment with HDACI perfectly well. How do they do this? The second puzzle is why are some cancers so susceptible to treatment with HDACI, whereas other cancers, unfortunately the more common solid tumours, are essentially unaffected by these, by these drugs. Now, we've been looking at this problem over, over recent years by looking in detail at the way HDACI change patterns of gene expression in human cells. We chose to look at the earliest changes in gene expression following HDACI treatment um, on the basis that this would represent the direct transcriptional response to HDACI induced acetylation. So we used um, high density gene expression microarrays um, to follow gene expression over a short time course using two clinically relevant HDAC inhibitors, um, valproic acid and SAHA, at concentrations that do induce global hyperacetylation even within this short time scale. Our first important observation was that we didn't see the general increase in gene expression that you might expect um, given the association between histone acetylation and transcription. Instead what we saw was a very limited tightly regulated response that was well conserved between the two inhibitors um, and we saw as many genes going down as went up. We saw changes in expression of a lot of transcription factors, both up and down, as well as the upregulation of several of the master regulator genes um, that are involved in gene regulation during development. And we think this represents uh, an urgent attempt to control gene expression in the face of HDACI treatment. Cytokines were downregulated, and this coincided with uh, a slowing of cell growth. And we also saw a comprehensive downregulation of the acetyl transferase complexes and their components. Um, and this is a very logical feedback loop. If um, HDAC inhibitors are um, upsetting the balance of acetylation, then downregulation of the acetyl transferases ought to help restore that balance. Uh, next, we looked at whether changes in gene expression were related to um, acetylation of histones at the promoter regions, the regulatory regions of genes. And surprisingly, we saw no evidence at all for um, promoter acetylation directly driving gene expression. Um, instead, what we saw was that the genes whose expression did change um, were already highly acetylated, and that didn't really change much with treatment. So what we think we're seeing is actually acetylation providing a permissive context for gene regulation rather than um, driving the regulation itself. And 
this raises the intriguing possibility that the resistance response is being driven by non-histone proteins. We know that non-histone proteins can be acetylated and deacetylated by the same um, enzymes as histones, and it may be that one or more of these are acting as the sensor of cellular acetylation levels and driving the resistance response. So we've identified a process by which cells adjust their patterns of gene expression to allow them to tolerate the toxic effects of HDACI. But if we are going to use this to help treat cancer, we need more detail. We need to understand the molecular mechanisms of the process. Now the bioassays hypotheses rubric allows you to speculate. And we've taken advantage of this to suggest a signaling pathway by which cells detect and respond to HSAC-I. We've also suggested that cancers that are sensitive to HDACI are those in which this signaling pathway has been compromised, either by mutation or by epigenetic changes. The idea is speculative, but it's based on our data and importantly, it points the way to future research. Now we've also asked why cells should have such a specific response to such a particular set of chemical inhibitors. And we suggest the answer here lies that in the fact that many of the HDACI in clinical use are based on natural products, largely bacterial. And bacteria kill or deter competing microorganisms using HDACI. So going back in evolution, our ancestors would have been exposed to these bacterial HDACI, and evolution being what it is, they would have developed defensive responses to protect themselves against these inhibitors. We're suggesting that we see the results of this evolutionary process today. But we shouldn't consign this interaction with bacteria to the evolutionary past, because they're, they're all around us. They're inside us as well. And bacteria in our colon are making high concentrations of short-chain fatty acids, very effective histone deacetylase inhibitors. And the cells of our colonic mucosa uh, need to uh, deal with these inhibitors. We've presented experimental evidence that our cells mount a resistance response that allows them to tolerate a particular class of anti-cancer drugs, the HDACI. We have proposed a testable mechanism by which this response might work, and we give an evolutionary justification for why it should be there at all. Our hope, of course, is that these ideas will allow us to identify cancers in which the response has been crippled by mutation, and to develop drugs that further undermine resistance. In either event, this information will help improve both the targeting and efficacy of HDACI and hopefully other epigenetic drugs.